rendering in Blender. Okay, first thing. <clears throat> you probably used Archimesh to uh, to do your room. So a few things about uh, the the Archimesh model. So you use a pen as per usual, and uh, I'll, I'll just get like a. Uh, an older folder, or uh, file I mean, and I can do this, I can click here, blend file, and, and here I can click this one, which means only objects and groups of objects, and select everything here, and I can select everything with A, hitting A, then a pen from library, and I should have my geometry together with the materials, inside my a Blender settings file and um, okay I can uh, hit uh, what's it called uh, holes auto holes for for this uh, for the room and um, I would advise you to to modify two things the the material of the glass and the material of the uh, walls and ceiling I mean. and you, you can do this uh, in the following way so I selected the um, the walls for now and if I hit here the square it uh, so that I have like uh, the the node editor for for the object material. And here it says what material it uses, which is wall material. And if I want to change this, I can do Shift Q. If this doesn't work, get the latest uh, uh, setting file, Baza Baza file, from the description below. But uh, anyway, so Shift Q and then replace material. And I want to replace wall material with uh, um, a white principled shader material and I can let's do the material first I'll just uh, put here an object so I can assign the material to it so I'm gonna just make a, like a cube for example and here I'm gonna make a new material which is gonna be named uh, uh, white and that's all I guess so I'm gonna <coughs> exchange this shader with the principled one shader which is a PBR shader which means it's physically accurate oh come on um, principled and I have a white or almost white material because if I hit here you can see it's not completely white because it would be I mean you don't have like pure white in reality anyway so this is the material and now I I hit shift Q and say replace material and here I'm going to wall material because this is the material that it uses and uh, wall material in here I look for white. Bam. So now the walls are uh, the white material because um, the original material, first of all, I don't know if, if it is uh, physically based, so PBR, like principal shader, and second, it also has like uh, this uh, orange things sort of. So the, the ceiling which is ceiling material is just a diffuse white I still prefer to use the principal shader because I think it, uh, it should work more realistically so I can just change it from here or with uh, shift Q as I showed you before but it's more convenient just to change it from here so I change those materials let's now change the, the glass materials here I don't have a glass because I deleted it before to 
do an experiment, but never mind it. Um, so if I the thing is that if I want to select the the glass, I can't because it's like this. I have this object. So the window it has the uh, frame and the sheet of glass are, are, are one object because you can assign different materials to different parts of, of one object and if I select it it says here plastic material but I know that, uh, that the glass it's actually I think it's called window material and how do I know this well if I switch to edit mode and then click here to select faces and click here in the near the center near the point of the center it says here it also selects this one because this is this is an, um, a duplicate how do you call it an instant duplicate anyway so if I select the uh, the sheet the the face that is supposed to be glass I have here glass material so that is the material that it's used so going back to object mode I can hit shift Q again replace material and in here I have glass material and I want to change it with the material that I made specifically for this purpose which you can find if you got the buzz of fab, which is this one window glass for interiors which has a bit of reflection reflection uh, becomes more evident if uh, the outside is darker or if you look at a shallower angle to it at a yeah like a smaller angle uh, and um, it also lets light get into the room without it being altered in any way I mean uh, the light doesn't uh, has the same intensity and it doesn't refract so it's like it's like you don't have any glass there but you also have some um, some reflections you want it to, to work as you as you would not have any glass because you don't want blender to struggle with uh, refractions and uh, what is called uh, uh, what's the name uh, color sticks because it you don't need that and also you don't want you want all the light to get in because you need as much light as possible in order for the render to look good anyway so I changed this uh, and now everything should be prepared for um, regarding the, the geometry done in um, in uh, Archimesh so I went inside and now I want uh, the camera to, to be here and in order to do this, if I click space and click align, I have this option align camera to view. So now my camera is inside. And let's say I want to make the angle bigger, I select the border, I hit W, camera lens and then adjust it with left to right. So I'm gonna make it like this. Uh, a fun thing you can also do is choose if you go here to camera to ch choose panoramic view and you don't see any difference because <laughs> let me go back to perspective it only shows the difference in the um, rendered view so if I hit shift Z um, well I don't have any HDR image I'm gonna put this right away but anyway you can make a distinction anyway so if I select the camera Oh, oops, so camera, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> camera and hit panoramic. I will have this like fisheye uh, effect. And I have here uh, some options. I have this one as well, and uh, this one, but this is like, uh, I don't know, it's something weird. Anyway, you, you should probably use just the no, the different one is well. Equisolid. And you can play around with the lens uh, angle and the field of view. So the lens, the smaller it is, the wider the perception angle it is. Also, if I go back to perspective and just switch to like uh, maybe solid view, 
uh, if I uh, if I modify the focal length, let's say to ten, I'll get a wider angle. So with W, you do the same thing. See, it changes if you look at the focal length there. Right. So let's put uh, let's put some uh, an image for the lighting. I'll go back to this to world uh, material, and here I need to open an uh, an HDR image. If you hit bookmarks here, you have recent, and I for one have my HDRs in one place. You can click this icon to to see them. Uh, to see how they look like, and I'm going to choose uh, this one for example, and see what I get. And uh, maybe I should uh, go outside of the room. Okay, so the light uh, doesn't have a, a good angle because I want it to come inside the room. I want as much light inside as possible. So now it's rotated with uh, around 55 degrees. So I'll, I need sort of the other way around. I'll just uh, try some numbers, maybe 200 and see what happens with this. So now it's pretty good. I can switch here to uh, to this type of lighting as well and to render it via me. Okay, uh, but I don't get much light inside, although I should get more light inside. And because uh, judging by uh, by the shadow I get here, that should should be here. Uh, should enter the room and leave like a, a spotlight on, on the floor, which it doesn't, which is kind of weird and I need to see why this happens. Yeah, so it turns out um, <clears throat> the problem was with the floor material. The floor material needed some, uh, had some like weird uh, options and it lacked the textures anyway so if you put like a normal material on the floor it, it works fine so going back to what uh, i was uh, saying i uh, i i chose here a rotation angle for the hdr map so that uh, i get um, light inside and i want to like to play with it a bit more maybe put it like this if you have like some table some stuff inside you can also make the light uh, hit uh, those objects and it can look uh, nice and I also want uh, the light to to make like a, a big uh, area or bigger area of uh, of, of uh, directly lit uh, surface and to do this uh, i mean i can try um, getting a map, another hdri map which has the sun lower which means the uh, the light will uh, will live oh i just know something will will live a longer uh, or bigger area with uh, direct light. I can also tilt the whole world, which, oh, which isn't uh, you might think is not a good idea because what shows on the um, through the window will be tilted. But I'll show you later that that you can change what uh, what it shows through the window because. Probably your apartment won't be in the middle of the desert or whatever this HDRI is anyway. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so you can uh, search for another 
image, another HDRI image, high dynamic range image, or you can also uh, tilt the image and see if it gets tilted. But I have like longer, um, uh, how should I say, light, uh, light spots. And uh, so play around with these because this actually helps quite a lot to, to have a, a, a bigger surface area. And also <coughs> with the noise, uh, it helps to have portals in here. So portals are... Um, I actually think I have one already. Is this one? What are portals? Portals are... Um, basically uh, some rectangles, some areas that tell, uh, tell Blender that, okay, I'm interested for the light that goes through these zones. So you make portals where the windows are so that um, Blender doesn't bother much with what happens on the outside and uh, makes uh, the light rays go through through the window more and, uh, and or not necessarily more but uh, it, it makes this a priority and it should help with uh, with noise which are those spots you get on the inside and to make portals you do like this portals are basically lamps but uh, so area lamps, so with create you have here lamps and you make an area lamp which is very small you hit S to make it larger and then you can scale it again with S on a different axis let's say for on X axis or something like that anyway and uh, you, so now this, uh, this object and it's light, but you're not interested in that. You want it to make to be a portal, so you just hit this one. So, on this tab, portal, and now it's just a portal, and um, you need it to to be towards the inside because you have this line that shows where it's pointed at. And if you look at the portal I uh, made for my scene, which is this one, maybe I can put this a bit closer. Um, see, this line shows me that it's directed towards the inside. Okay, so these are portals. Um, how can you make uh, the outside uh, show something else? For now, it just shows the sky. But maybe I want it to show some more, I don't know, some more social housing or another urban. Uh, image that you might uh, see through windows and um, in order to do this we're gonna basically make a, a plane that has an image that sits on the outside so let's insert here one and we're gonna do like this I'm gonna go I'm gonna exit the render view because it makes the computer go slower and I can do like this, import, images as planes. And now I can choose an image. And uh, I have some in here. Uh, I don't know, maybe this one, or this one, whatever. <clears throat> Let's try this one. And the thing is that... Uh, it's good to I'm gonna click undo. It's good to to be careful uh, of one option. So images explains, and that option is this one. Is uh, so I want this, and I want it to be come on shadeless, which means that it does, the image shows the same way regardless of how the light. Hits it because if it's diffuse, it means that if, uh, if the image is on, let's say, this side and uh, the light comes from here, it will be darker. And 
we don't want that, right? We want it to show exactly as it is here, not darker or lighter, depending on how the light hits it. So choose shadeless, and uh, <clears throat> now we can also scale it and rotate it on the z-axis and try to with a grab to put it uh, where the window is more or less of course you can make put it like closer or farther and so on and uh, let's see what we get now so we get some balconies or whatever a part of that image what uh, is you also need to do or not all the time, but it's better to do it all the time, is uh, the following. Um, see, our image, although it shows uh, okay, so it, it's not influenced by the light, it emits shadows, so we might get some shadows inside our room from this image, and we, want, we don't want that. So in order to, uh, to resolve this, the image needs, of course, to be selected, and um, we need to go here to this uh, uh, tab and go all the way uh, on the lower part, where on the cycle settings and um, this one shadow just uh, make it not be checked, uncheck it. And now it doesn't cast any shadows, so yay for that. If you want this to be like smaller or bigger, of course you can make the image smaller or bigger or, or make or move it farther. See? And we look through the window and see how long, how it adapts and how we would like it to be. Alrighty. What else? What else? Mm. Fuck. Um, uh, yeah, so just a few more things. Let's say we want to make a render. When we hit render, F12 or from here render, it will uh, render uh, what the camera or the principal camera sees. Because you might have more cameras, but one is the one that's principal, which is when you hit zero, it goes to that camera. So in here, for example, zero, bam. Anyway. Um, also, you can see in here, see we have this camera and this camera. The one that has the, um, the black triangle is the one that is used when, when clicking zero. All right. Uh, so, if we if we make a render, it uh, it will make this whole area. But let's say we want just a smaller part. We can go Control B and then select a part that we're interested in. Say this one. And now, if we hit F12, it will render only that part because maybe we have we want a test for a for a smaller area. So it will make the render. You need to wait for it to uh, to finish. Even though in the preview render it shows like this with a lot of points, in uh, in the end render it will show better because, uh, well, more things. The, the the settings for the render for the for a proper render like this one, so not the preview render which is seen in the viewport. The settings are uh, are are different. It uses more samples, which means just it calculates more. And also it makes uh, denoising. Denoising means that uh, areas which have noise are being uh, modified in post-production, so afterwards to not show that noise. See, these are uh, tiles or squares that are not denoised, and these are denoised, and we show a lot better. And you can see here the nose, 
13 tiles. Right, and after after the render is finished, you you can uh, check here to see how uh, how much uh, time it takes. Uh, you can uh, save it. You can cancel it hitting escape if you don't want it to finish. So the the escape uh, key on your keyboard. And we have this image, and let's say we want to save it. We save it with F3, key or here, image, save as image. And it's a PNG, which is fine, and just name it. And, yeah, but I don't want to save it. But let's say you want to make a, a few renders and compare them, you can also click here, see it says slot 1, I can go to slot 2, make another uh, render and save it here and then I can switch between these because slot 1 still has uh, the image I rendered before. Or you can just save them uh, in, in a folder and, and go to that folder in Windows and look at them or Mac or whatever. Um, okay. If we look here, we have this resolution, and I chose that resolution to be uh, around 200 uh, DPI or PPI pixels per inch uh, for an A3. A print. Uh, and uh, 200 ppi is, uh, is like the lowest uh, uh, you can go if you want it to, to look uh, okay. If we use the same, uh, if you don't change the, the, the resolution and print it on A4, we would have uh, around 280 PPI or DPI as people say, but they're wrong because it's PPI pixels per inch, not dots per inch. Anyway, um, uh, 280 PPI is uh, is a good quality uh, print. I thought that uh, you know A4 images you look closer to them than A3 images. But you can see here that we have a percentage, and now it's on 25. So if you want that resolution, it needs to be on 100%. If we click here, let's say 50, uh, the resolution will be half, but it will be half on both directions, right? Because on X direction and on Y direction. This means that the actual area that gets rendered is like this. It's, um, uh, it's a quarter, right? And this is important because it will take not half the time, but a quarter of the time, which also is the other way around. Let's say we want to make this double. If we hit here 200, uh, <laughs> the area won't be double, it will be four times larger because it will be this part will be double and the horizontal part will be doubled as well so we will have an area which is four times larger and it will take four times more so you need to take this into consideration when you're uh, playing around with uh, this factor so for the end the image you want it to 100% or if you if you don't have much time left because you can you get an estimated time when you hit render let's say I hit now render um, you can make it smaller how much smaller well it depends on <laughs> how much time you have and how low the quality you want it to be but for test renders, you can put it also like 5 or 10% and do a quick render to just see how to get an idea how it will look like uh, in the end.
Okay. Um, so now, here it says last, so how much the last uh, render took, which is uh, not that much, it's I don't know, a minute and uh, 43 uh, seconds, and this one should take around 20 minutes, which isn't that bad. And it, and it is at full resolution. Um, let me just check something. I'll just hit escape because otherwise it works very high. Um, come on, come on, come on, come on. So sampling, see, render, I have 800 samples and for preview I have just 25. So this is 25 samples and here is 800. The lowest you should go for a final render is maybe 500. You can go lower than that, but 500 is like... It's still okay. A thousand is good, two thousand is like very good, but you don't necessar necessarily need the uh, renders above one thousand. So eight hundred is a is an okay uh, sample number. So this would cover uh, most of the things you need to know for rendering. Hope it helps. Bye bye.